but we need to figure out where we're going to be playing in today's matchup as well. It's very important, so let's take a look at the map. Vito, Coastline and Border getting knocked out of the pool, including one of the best maps for SSG there, of course, since they played it previously. Cafe and Consulate are going to be the bands from Space Station. Bank the first from TSM, and they have the choice between Clubhouse and Villa. They will go with Villa at the end of the day, so we're going to get that map into play. Always love to see a Villa match. That's actually really interesting because playday number two, when these teams last met in Pro League, it was on Villa. Hmm. It's a little bit of a revenge match potentially there yeah. for one of the teams here, and we'll what? have to see how that plays out. It was out. a draw. It was a 6-6 six, six draw, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this were a, is, is a draw as well. Um, I, it, it does feel like one of those matches that you're going to be like, yeah, it's probably going to be a... Either one could win, you know, and then it ends up being a draw. Now, the interesting thing out of this, though, is SSG is okay to go into this. It's actually their least played map right now. Really? Yeah, like by a pretty good margin at this point. So, well, it's relatively close to Consulate, uh, but yeah, they've uh, they've managed to play it like three times in, in recent history, including that one tie. So we're going to see how comfortable they are moving into it with Canadian now as well. I mean, maybe things, maybe Canadians could have changed a lot of things about how uh, this map uh, plays for them, but... I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Uh, it looked almost as if they were trying. To, both teams were angled for angling for Villa. So I'm assuming that there's a lot of uh, practice that's gone in uh, based on the last time these teams met each other here, which was a long time ago. It was it was June 19th. So yeah, so far back. Quite a bit of time. If yeah. I if I'm remembering correctly from like rally and stuff like that, like EG seemed pretty confident on Villa and whatnot. So it might be I think like Canadian probably trying to bring some things into this team. Maybe. Okay. So what do you, what do you guys think? Who's gonna win this? Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us? Let's see. Okay. All right. Pretty close at the end of the yeah. day there. 55, though, for TSM. I mean, t okay. TSM gets a lot of credit. They haven't actually done much in the second half. They got yep. one point. They drew against Luminosi, which is impressive. Luminosi is a hard team to draw against, hard team to beat even. Uh, but then they lost to Evil Geniuses, which also, okay, not crazy. It's Evil Geniuses. Evil Geniuses right now, they are clearly very comfortable with who they have on that roster. They're looking really strong. So fair enough. Evil Genius is in a good spot. But TSM still has not done much in the second half. Whereas, on the other hand, uh, we do have a win for SSG. But hey, you know what? All that aside, we can only just we can only imagine what's going to happen in this match. I'm sure it'll be super exciting. So let's go ahead and load into Villa and get this ball rolling. TSM starting an attack and SSG on defense, which means they will ban first. So uh, first ban is going to be attacks, of course. It'll be Space Station's choice, and they're going to knock out Jackal again, keeping in a trend with that one, as we've been seeing Jackal knocked out pretty often here. Just a little bit too much information, as well as anti-roam for them. So last time we were here, TSM banned Jackal. Now, because Space Station did it, that's going to free up TSM to ban something else that they want gone. In this case, it will be Nomad. Now, what that means is Maverick, it will still be in play. All hard destructors will be, still be in play, in fact, and so will Thatcher, which is going to make Villa a little bit more maneuverable for the attackers. They won't be able to clear roamers as easily or, you know, isolate roamers as easily, but you're going to be able to actually get the attack on the site executed and done. Got the potential for like a Capital to come into play now as well as he's not going to be banned out too. So that's a lot of extra utility that could go over to TSM in this first half. And of course, Space Station in the second half. Defender bands though are going to be pretty straightforward, pretty in meta as we'll see Maestro and Mira get knocked out. Echo will be left in though as a result of that and he is always dangerous. But most teams bring IQ when Echo is in play and in, in most circumstances we'll be able to easily deal with those Yokai drones with an IQ in play. There are a few people who bring IQ and don't know how to play her. It does happen, <laughs> but it's very, very rare. Usually when you have somebody on IQ, it is a well-rehearsed, well-practiced role because of how essential her function is to the team's success. So, it'll be Merc stuck on that role. And I'm sure he will be doing a good job. Now, um, the bans were somewhat reversed. Uh, I believe it was the opposite, like uh, SSG banned Maestro last time and Miro was banned by TSM, but it's the same as result in the end. The only, again, the big difference is the Nomad instead of a Maverick here. So, slight change, but it's not probably going to be the, the craziest thing to influence the outcome overall. Okay, now, as, as we load in, it'll be the first site on Aviator Games. Now, this is pretty standard. You get two differing opinions on which is the primary site between Trophy and Aviator Games. Um, and honestly, you can't go wrong. They're both, on, to, to me, same caliber sites. Yeah, upstairs sites take a huge precedent over any other site on this map right now for both teams. As we'll see them definitely try to play into those well before they attempt anything downstairs. Although I think we have seen more success from defenders downstairs in recent history, whereas before it was almost always the attackers that kind of easily claim that one. I think the meta has slowly started to shift a bit in that respect. Might be the case. But uh, for now, I, I think everybody's just going to stick to what they 
feel yeah. is best, right? And that's going to be the Aviator Games or Trophy. I'll we'll probably see that in, in, in probably in that order for SSG throughout this first half, and then either a kitchen or a library. I mean, you could go for either one. Uh, library, when it first came out, people really didn't like it, but uh, some teams have been forcing it to happen, and sometimes it works. Seen a Latam play around a little bit with potentially trying to throw a curveball and start downstairs every once in a while as well, but not too much yeah. of that in North America. TSM clearing in downstairs. Chief has control of Art. He's going to be looking for some more control as he has a buck. Can't open up from below. Just wants to find the position to make that happen. Now, Chief is drawing himself in here, which is not great efficiency, to be honest. But uh, if Bolo can take control after Achieve drones in, then, uh, hey, you know, that that, that can work. Uh, one thing to uh, keep in mind is that uh, we're going to be going for a study take, which sometimes can be bottlenecked. And we can see Merc does have eyes on a Yokai drone. He's trying to trace it down here and knock it out, but can't successfully find it. It also has to be careful as this is obviously destructible. Flooring with him shooting through it, and there could potentially be someone up on top of there to fire his back as well if he's not careful. So the IQ won't be able to knock out the Yokai now, but they've got a good idea as to where it's positioned at a minimum so they can make that call out to the rest of TSM's roster and make them aware of it if they push into those main stairs. Uh, I just noticed this, but... Gotcha is playing instead of uh, yeah yeah instead of Jarvis. Jarvis, uh, they they tweeted that earlier today. Jarvis has a song. Oh, yeah. so we got a double coach team right <laughs> right now. All right, that's uh, interesting. Yeah, it's Pojo Man and uh, and Gotcha. Yeah, well, I guess Pojo Man's back to being a player. He's been doing a great job as that, but definitely something to keep in mind. Jarvis not in play here. Gotcha will be instead. Bolo eats some early damage, but there's already been a lot dished out to SSG, so it's not necessarily the strongest disadvantage for TSM. I'd say it's about even at this point. A minute left, and study control has been established, which is really important in the execution. Claymores go on on the retake, both of them. Cheed will get the first kill there. Rampy goes down, and he's setting up a nade into Gun Vault. This might do some serious damage, and it does, in fact, down two players in Gun Vault. If Achieved had another nade, this would be ruthless. But it does mean there's only two guns up right now. And it looks like they're trying to fix that right now as they rotate into the gun vault. Oh, a big kill for Canadian. He might just have kept his team in this round. Merc on a great position, though. He can do some damage. Bolo takes down Thinking Aid, but it's an impact to trade himself out. Thinking Aid, good from the postmortem. Chief gets one on the entry, but Fultz refrags yet again. SSG will not let this round slip through their fingers. They continue to refrag after refrag, but the plant will go down. And in a post plant, it's a two versus one. Just Bosco against Achieved and Pojo Man. He might not have any uh, gas canisters. It looks like, no, he doesn't. So he's going to have to hard retake, and he rushes out, but misses the shot. Prefire gives away his position, and now the retake has been made even harder. Drone calling him out this whole time. Both of the attackers by the main bar or in the hallway near that main bar. Whether or not Bosco knows that, he's going to have to confront two guns at once on this retake. Flash thrown out against him, but it won't stun him too heavily. He's still going to be good to take this. Unfortunately, though, time is about to run out for him to actually get onto the counter defuse in time. And there you go. Will be finally shut out as TSM the hands of Pojaman finishing things off, takes control of round number one on the attack of Aviator Games. All right, so, so far, Gotcha has not hurt the way that TSM attacks this. Clearly a good understanding of what his role is and what he needs to do for his team. Good execution there on the Thatcher to allow the um, actual take into the site. But overall, that nade from Achieved was really the star of the show. It did not get any immediately secured kills, but it did so much damage and downed two people that not only not only off the backs of that damage, but also the, the fact that those two players were down for a solid 20 to 30 seconds, that allowed TSM so much maneuverability. They get them on the floor, they can do whatever they want. And they did. It worked out great for, uh, for TSM in that round. Now it's gonna be kitchen site. Interesting, so SSG trying to trip up their opponents here by going to Kitchen. Or maybe they're just really comfortable. Either way, a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. Yeah, so definitely changing up the usual meta for these site rotations a little bit here. And this might be part of the reason why Space Station feels the confidence, maybe doing some prep work on these downstairs sites over the past couple of days and wanting to trial it out here against TSM right now. TSM, of course, still should have a pretty good idea as to how to attack this. This is definitely one of the, I think right now for NA anyway, this is definitely the site that teams go to more often when they go to a downstairs site. So they'll at least have an idea about how to attack it. Five seconds left. Yeah, no, it, it is, is more common, I, I believe. And 
A kitchen is, in many opinions, uh, more defensible than living room, but it is, I think, Victor, it, it suffers from the same thing. And that is, if you take control as the attacker, you have control of the site. You just have to be able to open it up. And there's a buck in play here for TSM, so that is certainly uh, a strong possibility that TSM will be able to open up enough angles, if they get top four control, that the anchors will have a hard time holding. And that's the, it's the same thing that the living room suffers from. It's, it's just that vertical control is so powerful on this site. There's no, there's very few places you can play safe uh, as an anchor. So Achieve and the rest of the team are starting to buckle open some of the windows here. They're still going to try to take master bedroom and bathroom more than likely just to give them the top down play from that one. And we will see their buck move in first to start clearing out. We've got one player from Space Station holding in the back of Astronomy as well to prevent this and maybe fire back a little bit if TSM wants to use that to actually get downstairs. But not a whole lot of action away from that. That's going to change though as Gotcha is able to rotate in to be able to knock out Canadian and give his team the 5v4 as he starts moving out the art felt there and takes further control of the first floor. Well, so far, TSM, good control upstairs, and a free pick onto Canadian who is rotating just the wrong moment thanks to Gotcha's positioning in bike. And overall, the round just panning out well for TSM. C4 sounds like detonates, but no kill. Pre play C4 in bathroom, and it will be eliminated. Actually, no, sorry, Legion trap there. No pre place. Skeleton Key doing a lot of work here above Kitchen. Gonna gather a lot of information. There's not a lot of room for the attackers in bathroom to maneuver to use those angles, but they can still open the angles and force the, uh, the anchors to move. That's exactly what they've done. TSM now looking to open up the laundry wall. They've got a minute to make this happen. It's definitely very doable. And away from that here, yeah, as you said, with still a minute remaining, TSM is in a great position right now. Still a little low on actually clearing out this site, though, only finding the one pick against Canadian. But that is going to start changing, as we'll see Bosco be able to find Gotcha instead. Pojo Man, though, through the slight indentation in the wall, is able to catch Bosco right back, pick up a trade, still keeping TSM in control. The man advantage, but not necessarily the timer. So now we're starting to get a little bit low on it here. About 35 seconds left, another one for one goes off with Fultz and Pojo Man falling at the hands of Rampy. We'll see him pick up the next kill here as he's going to be able to move in, pick up one against Merc. Thinking Nade will also find Bolo. So SSG holding on to this, but we're not done just yet. Achieved now sits alone in the 1v2 situation. Sprays into some of the paneling here. Most importantly, Diffuser is under his control here, so he can leverage it. He's got to be very careful about how he gets this down. We'll try to go grenade toss and hoping it would have met and picked up a kill, but it's not going to be the case. We'll see a C4 tossed in. That actually won't take him down. He's got the potential to knock out one player here, but no, can't get it done. Over to the pistol to finish it off. He's found the second one. He's going to try to plant. Can't make up his mind at the end of the day, though. And ultimately, Rampy will finally confirm the kill unachieved and close out on the second round for SSG. The Gambit play downstairs works just barely and gives them a one-for-one -one tie. Yeah, Achieve just not seemingly aware of where his opponents were, so... He managed to identify there's somebody inside of um, Memorial, but he didn't realize it was both. And because of that, he was a little overthinking that. And also the plant denial, the C4 went wide. Could have planted, but he didn't know everything. Achieve just didn't have the information to work with there. So it's not really on his shoulders. Most of that for me comes out of the fact that SSG managed to keep the man advantage by getting that early frag onto Gacha, who is attempting to uh, sorry peak the breach, um, which was very small. Um, gotcha, peeked wide, lost his life. Yes, refrag came in, but it then needed to be refragged again by another person peeking into laundry. The layers and layers of refrag going in the favor of the person who got the first kill, or the team that got the first kill, which in this case was SSG. So nice try from TSM, but uh, honestly, just, yeah, SSG keeping up the momentum, you gotta hand it to them. Yep, and keeping that kind of domino effect going on the trades that you are mentioning too, to allow for them to eventually have the advantage of the 2v1 at the end of it. So back over to Aviator Games for SSG's second attempt on this site. TSM won the initial attempt with some great aggression for them to be able to take control, as well as that very well-placed nade, which opened up all possibilities of attack in round number one. We'll see if something like that can happen again. It'll be a bit unlikely, I'd imagine, but we'll have to see as TSM are approaching it in a very similar way. You yeah, have also brought that buck once more. All the tools that are necessary for an Aviator Games attack are here from TSM. Looks like a small roam by Fultz on the north side. Rampy there to support by 90. 
but it's not a dedicated hard roam, and they're not going to be going over towards Master, at least not just yet. Canadian on the main stairs, dangerous position to play, but can be oh so powerful because he's got the hard cover of that rail at the top that protects him from median engagement coming out of study. He still has to be cautious though, especially of below, which is something that TSM has had a tendency to clear in these rounds. TSM, of course, already managing to get a few players up on the balcony leading into the study, but won't be able to push in just yet. It is being denied right now by Bosco with the smokes. Away from that, though, we've got a few other players still taking positions on the inside of the house itself. The Chief will start working in from Astronomy side. He's not going to be alone in that. He will have Merc grouping up with him. Pops open. Wall leading into the red hall. There, a little bit of spam out to the window. Looks like the silhouette's lined up, but obviously that player is well behind a safe wall. Now drone work begins on the inside of the site. Bolo is going to be able to get a little bit of intel. These figures out where the Cade is positioned, but it's going to be Merc instead that strikes first, finding the dock, knocking out Fultz and giving TSM again that 5v4 advantage. That's a really good pick early on, but Bosco's going to answer back as Gotcha goes down. Gotcha's been the first victim on TSM a lot of these rounds. Merc though, right after. He goes down to Canadian on the roam inside of living room. Bolo looking for that refrag. He knows there's an opponent downstairs with him, but he doesn't know where. No one's there to drone. Achieved is coming in to try and drone, but Rampy cuts off the drone, which means Canadian's position's still unknown. Pojo was trying to drone down red stairs, but now he's distracted, trying to take into the site, which means Bolo's going to try and clear him. No, he's not. He's actually just going to fall back. It's a dedicated site take. TSM are like, okay, we've got roamers on the flank. Let's site. And that might even make sense with two roamers. That means there's only two anchors. One gas canister shot and the smoke as well. Bolo is clutching up big for his team as he's managed to allow for the plant to happen. And the roamers are coming back for flanks. There's another cover from Bolo. He's going to fall off the angle because he just doesn't need to hold it anymore. On the diffuser is Pojo Man. He'll stick hard on that angle. Bolo tries to retake. Brings out the lifeline. He'll hit that shot, which is going to slow down Canadian now in sight instead of roaming. They didn't flank, they just went for the sight take. Rampy will get achieved, who is trying to cover, but Bolo, a triple, goes for the quad, can't get it, but Pojo Man will, and TSM takes the round. Some great coverage there from Bolo to allow Pojo Man to plant. All of the security in that one, but yeah, what a wasted opportunity, it seems, from Space Station after the positions they had, especially on flanks from downstairs, to be able to potentially shut that down. Just didn't see any of that come to fruition. All the roamers fell back into safe positions through main stairs and then got into the site that way, but weren't able to pull off the retake because the plant was such a secure one from TSM right behind that vault door. Great stuff from Bolo to be able to hold it for that long as well, and that'll be two successful takes on Aviator Games. Space Station, of course, have that downstairs site locked. They are not going to re-attempt the Aviator Games again, so they'll move over to the other side of the second floor and do Trophy Statuary instead. I mean, I could see... I could see SSG not going to Aviator Games for the rest of this match. Yeah. Honestly, but the way this has been playing out. If they win this one, they should have the kitchen unlocked to play into once again after this one, so they'll be able to go to that. But yeah, if they manage to go on a bit of a streak, they'd have to go back to it for one more time. But I think if they've got a choice in it, they're going to try and avoid that just because of the fact that TSM has now escaped with two really convincing wins. One big thing about TSM's wins, though, is they are convincing, yes, but they're also off of big plays from individuals. In that last round, it was Bolo and Pojo Man. Huge plays from them. They managed to do a lot of work. Pojo Man not only shot a smoke uh, canister from the, uh, well, from the smoke himself, then also shot the smoke. He also managed to cover another direct retake there from the Kayid and uh, eventually got one of the flankers. If Rampy, coming from 90, had survived, then, okay, Pojo Man's going to get pinched on and he's going to die to the one versus two. Um, so overall, um, big plays from TSM in that last round, but then also in the first round where they managed to win. Well, you know, that was the nade from Achieved. So it's a lot of individual efforts right now. And I'm seeing, I'm feeling a lot of more teamwork on the side of SSG for sure. Um, as much as TSM are winning, I, I think that if the, if the momentum for individuals doesn't keep up for TSM, this could be a really tricky match for them. We'll see how all that plays out, though. It's another new site that TSM now have to attack in Trophy Satcher. Not one that they should be unfamiliar with, though, as it's still our second most popular site on this map, going by stats. Space Station, in the meanwhile, do have a pretty standard setup to play into it currently. And we are going to see Achieve to go for another one of those nades, it looks like, but we'll cancel that, actually. Do a little bit of drone work instead, as Canadian on the Ella, actually, is getting set up to once again take duels from the inside of his current position. That nade does go over the top, the inside of Laundry, but not much on the other side of that. Not really anything that the Buck is going to be able to take and achieve is going to be able to claim for TSM. He will go for it one more time, though, but again, that's going to be both nades gone, and unfortunately not much to find from them. 
TSM getting disoriented and shut down at a lot of angles, but we will see a downed Ella finished off by a cheat, but two for his trouble. And that's three now as Fultz from behind will eliminate Gotcha, who had not fully droned out his position. And actually, as it turns out, Canadian is still on the ground. Maybe Bosco doesn't have any stims. He hadn't been finished off either. He's likely to be recovered at some point, but no, not the case. Actually, Bosco's just somewhere else entirely, so no save possible there. But still a man advantage for the defenders, regardless of Canadian's defeat. Seemingly a shutdown right now from Space Station as TSM did try to push in, but have been outright denied for the most part. Pojo Man now going to rotate back upstairs outside of the master bedroom windows and potentially to try and work in from there. Just opening it up right now, Merc is actually nowhere near him. He's roaming way downstairs on the outside, and it looks like he's going to be potentially making his way in through one of the windows leading in to the study. Uh, they'll, they're just trying to gain some positions, and by they, I mean TSM. Anything they can get at this point is going to be good. Um, so they're trying to figure out, since there's only three defenders left, they cannot cover everything. So what TSM are trying to do right now is they're trying to determine, all right, what are they not covering? What is least covered? Where can we apply pressure and find our uh, find an edge in this round? Because that they have to have one. If they don't have any kind of advantage and they're looking at a refrag fest, that'll end up going in the favor of SSG because they've got one more guy. Smoke canister goes out into statuary just as SSG were looking like they were going to try to pressure towards it as well. Another smoke canister going to be able to block these guys from moving into the other site. And they do not have time really to wait these oh. up. Merc with a nice find though against Bosco just when it seemed he was going to go down. And Pojo also takes down Thinking Nade. These two entry frags out of nowhere have reignited the round for TSM. All of a sudden, everything for SSG now falls to Fultz and he's going to go right into Merc's angle. I don't know how they do it, but TSM pull off the 2v3 win. I gotta say it again, it's individual efforts. That round right there, that's... Oh, the, the good night! two of them as well. <laughs> it's Gotcha and Merc, they're at it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And, it, you know, it is. It's the individual efforts, though. Because that round was done. It was over, man. But then Merc hits an absolutely nuts shot onto the dock playing inside of Master. That was a pixel angle, guys. And you could barely even see him. He reacted to the tracers. Following that, Pojoman, he's like, not even second guessing it. He's in sight. Gets an entry frag there. I honestly thought Pojo would die. I thought it would fall on Merc's shoulders in a one versus two, but no, Pojo adds to it. And then suddenly, the attackers have the advantage out of nowhere for, from nothing. A massive flip from what we expected to come out of that round anyway. Seemingly, that was going to go into Space Station's hand quite easily after they shut down that initial execute without much of an effort put in by them. TSM turn it around in the 2v3 and still come out on top. That's now a 3-1 to one lead for TSM. Space Station struggling on this defensive side, but still not afraid to go back to Aviator Games once again and try this for a third time. I usually try to avoid this topic as much as possible, but I feel like it is very relevant in this situation because we're on Villa. Villa is the most, I believe, defender-sided map. It is up there. It's like top three minimum, but last I checked, it was the most. Um, and SSG are currently losing the defensive half. If they lose one more round of the defensive half, this should be over. And one thing that's really important to note is that while all this is happening, Jarvis is not playing. Gotcha is playing. There's got their coaches subbing for them right now. And honestly, Gotcha has not been having that like Super Saiyan coach performance right now. Like it's just not happening. It just hasn't been the case. He get he's getting picked a lot, but he's doing his job. He's playing the utility. He's playing for his team for his strategy, and that's working out. That's fine. But he's not performing like you would expect like Jarvis to in that position. So there is right now a subdued TSM, and they're three one against SSG. That is not great if you're SSG, especially on the defensive half. And so, once again, SSG will look to turn their luck around. It'll be on that site that they've lost two different times now. Looking to make it potentially three here if they can't finally pick up a W on this attempt. Again, Bolo, who was the hero the last time we played onto this site, goes right into study and finds an opening pick all the way through the site. Guys, he just peeked the B door. You're not supposed to be able to peek the B door, go away unpunished at all, and you're not supposed to kill somebody in gun vault. That's just not supposed, it shouldn't happen. We didn't see it. It must have been incredible. But there you go. Early advantage for TSM. That is not good for Thinking Nate or SSG. Well, ah. if it plays, that's going to put a lot of pressure on them on the inside of the site here. Got one more player holding, but gotcha. This time is going to be picked as Bosco takes the angle against him and finds the trade to bring us back down into a 4v4. That's really good there from Bosco. He needed that pick. He needed to bring it back. With the wall open. 
on both sides, it seems like, of the uh, games room bar. Both sides, yeah, now have been opened up, so that's really tricky for SSG and achieved on 90 repel. We'll get one, but Foltz gets the refrag playing 90 himself. Bolo's in sight, so is Merc. The plant's going down. There's no way to stop it, but oh, Bolo, beautiful shot from Foltz. He goes down. And one versus three. This is definitely winnable, considering that Foltz has managed to take out Bolo on a tight angle. He seems on point right now, landing his shots, but he's got to find his targets. Sees one, just can't land anything on a Merc, and dies to a Claymore because he's full flashed. A beautiful kill there for Kat Gotcha, and he's he's grateful. He needed it. He was <laughs> dropping a donut, so that is corrected now. <laughs> so Gotcha will take those. A bit unfortunate as well, as he still had two stim charges left, so was going to try to run into study, re-stim himself back up, and re-engage once again. But obviously that won't happen, and TSM will continue to run the gauntlet now at four to one. Okay, guys, I know it's really early to call, but. Um... TSM have put themselves up 4-1 on a Villa attack. So, and it's off of some really ridiculous stuff that's happening. Honestly, SSG, it's not necessarily that they're playing poorly. It just seems like they're not prepared for the stuff that TSM are doing. Mm -hmm. TSM are, they're peaking things and winning fights, guys. That's what's going on right now. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm just curious if Space Station can bounce back. If they go into the second half and they're on, they're, they're on attack now of Villa... Um, and they're, what, 5-1, 4-2? Can, can SSG really win that many attacks with what we're seeing right now? I don't know. It's looking really... It's looking like it's going to be really hard for them, is all, is all I'm going to say right now. Well, we'll find out about that in just one more round, as this is the last of the half here. TSM's last hurrah on attack, Space Station's last attempt to defend. And they do go back to so far what is the only site they've won, <laughs> which is the kitchen, interestingly enough. Yeah, odd as that is. Um, I, I, I could see this being a 4-2 pretty easily, but even then, that's not great for the defense. If this ends in a 5-1, then, uh, we're, I mean, maybe Space Station's is really good at attacking on Villa. Maybe they've got, they've got it all in that, in that pocket. Um, it's possible. Well, so far, been some really tremendous effort from TSM, and Space Station aren't necessarily playing poorly as much as they are getting caught off guard. TSM getting uh, very quickly into the basement to try and apply some pressure to the storage room. And that's going to be Merc to do that. Ooh, he's actually got a good angle here through the drop down, wary of it. But he just, he just pushes up. Yeah, he's going to move right through. No resistance on this one, right up to the backside stairs here and try to go into the site, but he will have to work back a bit there as we are going to see some resistance, but it's still Pojo Man that strikes first and other teammates have been able to work their way into the building regardless. Merc's going to take a little bit of smoke damage there as he gets the Claymore onto the ground just to prevent any sort of run out against him. And now he can safely kind of swing in here. Now the smoke resistance is gone. They are in. What is going on right now for TSM? They are walking all over the site and the round's only just begun. We're less than 60 seconds into it and we're now in the midst of a team fight because as you can see, Merc has just walked right in. He is finally going to go down at the hands of Fultz, and that will bring us down to a 2v3, as Space Station does seem to be holding on at the end of the day. Bolo trying to look for something to bring his team back into this, but that's not proving so easy. He'll lose Achieved, now leaving himself on his own on the inside of the kitchen, and he, while he does have Diffuser, he does not have the safety needed to justify going for a plant right now. He's moved over to a very exposed position. Use the lifeline. He knows where the smoke is. Uh, there's also a pulse. A beautiful flick from Bolo. And he knows where smoke is. He might be able to get it, but no, he's downed. A rotation from Bosco. And he'll get the final kill. Space Station managed to end this first half. At least in a 4-2. Just a uh, slight misread there at the end, thinking he was going to pop out from the same angle again instead of completing that full rotation around the barricade. So he will finally drop after quite an epic round there, quite a fast round as well from the guys on TSM to end their half still with a very advantageous 4-2 scoreline. Now as they go on to defense, we'll go back to the standard sites and of course they'll be starting out on Aviator Games. Wow, this, this whole match has just been TSM. They're pushing everything. SSG are not able to hold the bottlenecks. It's the strangest thing. It's like SSG has been cowed somehow, and I'm not sure why or how or when that happened, but they're playing extremely passive on defense. Now SSG are on attack, and they should be able to apply much more pressure, Attackers but I, I don't, and since they are the ones who are doing the pressure. Um, but I don't know if that's going to change the outcome because we're on Villa. I, I just, I don't know. Either way, it's made for an exciting game so far as TSM is bringing this type of firepower to the table. And now it's Space Station's turn to try or turn to try and see what they can bring up for this one. 
we are going to see things like a Doka be brought into the table, which as far as I can remember, we didn't really see used by TSM at all. It's a little bit more Intel capability adding to the table here for Space Station. It also helps them and executes be able to reconfirm Intel on player positions and things of that nature. Reinforcements going in here to the study walls. And I mean, you're also going to see Gun Vault reinforced, it looks like. Some basic reinforcements by the games room wall. I mean, everything's pretty basic right now. No rotation, no, sorry, no Roma reinforcements or anything like that. We've seen a couple of those um, here and there, maybe like by between study and, or no, no, not study, uh, statuary and master, but not the case in this match. Both teams are going to uh, Aviator Games, opting to anchor primarily, so. Nothing crazy. Rampy bringing the G8. We've seen a little bit of G8 play. Uh, it's got the angled grip, which uh, now which is um, makes it viable. Because it used to be that uh, it zoomed in at a snail's pace, and now you can actually fight people with it. So it's become kind of popular. This thing's a little bit easier for them to attack with. And now, though, we're not going to see the G8 get too much action as they do need to deal with the electronics. They've just got the scanner out to try and deal with some more of that. And to give Space Station the room, they need to try and push in a study. As right now, it's looking like Space Station taking a very traditional attack against this site. Not a huge amount of variance. They are going to catch the uh, ADS sitting on the stairs, too, so should expect some presence there. As normally, you are going to have one to two players kind of roaming and trying to get control of that first floor from the attacking side. And again, just giving them the intel that Gotcha would be the one they'd have to deal with. But he's already been pushed back, as you can see. He took a little bit of damage, too. So it's looking like he's already going to fall back to the site this early on. Yeah, he actually um, he proned his way back out of that uh, position. He was getting aggressive on study and decided to, you know what? Uh, I've delayed for long enough. I'm going to fall back. Probably the right call for Gotcha. And the longer he stays alive as a lesion, the better. C4 goes out and gets nothing. Uh, there was nobody inside of study at that point. But now there are players in studies. Base station with control. It's taking them a decent chunk of time, though. So that's worth keeping in mind. TSM, the longer this goes on, the bigger their advantage. SSG will drone out the roamer of the Jaeger. That's going to give good information for them. No, they know what they need to deal with later on. Of course, they were the ones to ban the Nomad, which means that there could be a main stairs flank at any moment. The way that this is playing out doesn't seem like SSG are too focused on watching that. Correction, Rampy is doing exactly that. Down to the final minute of action here, though, in Space Station. Trying to get into position to go for this execute soon, but positioning is not necessarily playing into their favor at this point. With TSM still having good control, and Space Station basically having to be ready to go for potentially a full 5v5 play here. And you still have players like Achieve sitting on 90 as well, getting ready to resist this push should it come in. So this is not going to be an easy play for Space Station, even with any of the potential info that they have up to this point. TikTok here, ladies and gentlemen. Mark gets a kill there by Red Stairs as Rampy attempts to do his own flanking onto the Roamer. Polo holding onto the West Hallway and he's doing a good job of it. The phone call not really getting that advantageous. Pojo gets an aggressive angle but cannot get the down on the Bosco. But so far, there's no threat of a plant. There's still Merc in the hallway. Pojo gets a nice kill there through the rotation, but a flurry of kills ultimately end in SSG on a strong disadvantage. Thinking Nade, respect to him. We'll try to stick the plant, but TSM will win that round. And holding it again, unfortunately, Space Station just not really the means or the positioning necessary in order to execute in full 5v5 fashion that late into the round. They kind of just get run over by the defensive setup through a flurry of trades, ultimately, and that's, that's pretty much how it plays out. Well, I, I gotta say, I, a Space Station didn't really have a whole lot going for them in that round. They didn't really set themselves up for success, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. They didn't get West Hall control, they didn't get 90 control, they didn't get connect connector control, which is the uh, room where Merc was playing at the top of Red Stairs. They got no control other than top study stairs, or top main stairs, if you want to call it that, and study. That's the that's it. That's all Space Station had that whole round. When they tried to push the West Hall, oh wait, they didn't, even though they had five <laughs> live. Uh, when they tried to yeah, push, or they, if they had, Bolo was holding it aggressively, pre-firing the angle. I'm sure he probably would have won that fight. The way he was looking, he was on point with it. But instead, they all just kind of tried to funnel their way into um, the bomb site to a bottleneck. They got torn apart. Rampy was the only ex the only different thing there, as he was trying to come up red stairs and flank Merc, and he died to Merc. So that that whole attack from Space Station was just kind of, what are they trying to do? 
a bit lackluster ultimately at the end of the day for them. And that's going to be scary going into these next couple of rounds because now TSM already at five. Two more rounds to go and they've got control of this matchup. And Space Station has seemingly a lot of adjustment needed to be done. Now, interestingly, we're also going to see TSM take the page out of Space Station's book and go to the kitchen for the second site as well. So not a lot of teams like in Statuary, at least between these two today. So we are going to see quite a bit of play downstairs after talking about it earlier on. That's yeah, quite interesting. Um, bringing Kitchen as the secondary for both of these teams. Uh, well, okay. As we play into this round, uh, we've seen not a lot from Space Station so far, to be honest. And it's curious because you, we, we expect them to, to be... I thought this was going to be the, the slowest match of the day. But right now we're set up for uh, potential like 7-3. Um, 7-2 even, if TSM are on point for the rest of this, because the defense already has started looking good. And that, I, I guess that brings in the question, like, like, was this too early of a map, to, or was it too early to bring this map into the fold for Space Station, seeing as it doesn't seem like it was played that much up until this point, and mm. didn't really have a lot of wins, whereas TSM, it's it's one of their better better engagements, usually. I think he just did get a kill in uh, in bathroom, and actually it was all his effort. He droned out the Valkyrie, then shot the Valkyrie through a wall. Now that's that's some really good situational awareness there from Thinking Aid. I'm um, not great from Achieved, and now TSM find themselves on the back foot. Now the early pick we've always talked about how important that is. That could be the hook in the uh, in the fish that allows SSG to finally reel in a win in one of these attacking rounds. Um, but it's definitely not a sure thing with the again the individual clutch performances we've been seeing on TSM's side. Uh, it's entirely possible that it might not even matter. Bolo going to be leaping his way down there. Again, trying to take up a little bit more position closer to the site as we are approaching that last third of the round here. And in the meanwhile, Space Station, for the most part, still just sitting stationary outside. Thankfully, this is a site you don't necessarily need a whole lot of inner control in order to execute appropriately onto it as it's pretty close to some windows and whatnot where you're given that access. But now we're going to start to see that change that we've entered that last third. You can see Rampy taking a position on the inside of Master, and is going to do a lot of reconstruction here to try to give his team a bit more of an angle to play with. That'll extend all the way into the bathroom while continuing to do the same thing, and probably stick around here for most of the rest of this round, especially if the plant works out in his team's favor. Another execute going to be moving in just a second here. That is going to allow for these guys to work their way in. Flash out from Laundry as well, and a hopeful push to follow this up soon, but nothing coming out from that so much just yet. 30 seconds remaining, however, for SSG to at least attempt to put the Diffuser on the ground. Canadian will be next to push in, and he'll be the first to go down at the hands of Bolo. Rampy, though, brings it right back under SSG's control by finding Pojo Man. Still, though, you do have to start getting a bit worried about the timing, but not anymore as Rampy finds another one. Manages to snipe about Bolo. Mark will respond, but again, time is starting to get very, very low here. Space Station need to crunch, and they need to do it now. Otherwise, TSM will win it yet again on time. Here's the run out from Gotcha. Double from him. Oh. Makes it into the hallway as well and escapes. And there you go. Merc finishes things out for TSM and puts them up on six. Gotcha with the big plays. It wasn't happening earlier, but now on defense, he cannot be stopped. TSM, they were out of that round. And then Gotcha brought him back. Merc just cherry on top right at the end there. But now, match point for Team Solo Mid. Really impressive. And you gotta hand it to them. Uh, you gotta hand it to the coach. That's I, I, against SSG. You just you don't you don't expect that. Living room library now. Uh, <laughs> what is TSM doing? <laughs> what is going on? What is SSG doing? TSM is just bragging at this point. Like what is? Were they in the chat? I didn't see something. No, no. I'm just saying with the with the library play going yeah. in there as well. You think you'd go over to statuary? But... I don't know. Dude. No. This is, this is absolute mayhem. <laughs> so let's see if TSM can finish this off with two downstairs sites. I mean, they've got four rounds to play around with here now. So let's see if they can close it out now or if we're going to need a few more here. Space Station is going to be able to wake up once again for this attacking side. Yeah. All right. So 6-2 TSM. And, well, they're looking, they're looking pretty strong, i got to say. Now... They are right now in seventh place. And if TSM manages to win this, that's going to put give them three points to their five. So they aren't going to um, get too far, but uh, at least they'll tie in points with Rogue. And let me see. Uh, considering Rogue did, I believe, yeah, they lost today. Considering who has the tiebreak in the TSM Rogue matchup? That's 
Rogue does, so Rogue will retain their position outside of relegations, even if TSM wins this. So it's not the end of the world for Rogue, but they do need to start, you know, picking up the pace. And right now, it looks like TSM are angling to get out of relegation spots for this season. Yeah, that's going to be, and obviously will start to get very dangerous for Rogue as well, to potentially try and stay in the Pro League if they end up remaining in that bottom two, should TSM yeah. take the position away from them in the future here. It could be a draw. At Space Station are the kings of draws. Well, actually, right this season, uh, I think Rogue. Isn't it Rogue? Yeah, Rogue has, actually has the, the draw record right now, I think. Yeah, they've got five. So right now, Rogue are the kings of draws. Mm -hmm. But Space Station in the past were, and they are right on Rogue's heels with four draws to Rogue's five. So if anyone's going to draw this, it's going to be Space Station. Oh. Or Rogue. <laughs> well, let's see. Unfortunately, asking Space Station to pick up four rounds in a row on after attack. the performance we've seen. Yeah, on attack for the performance we've seen so far just doesn't seem realistic. But as with everything in Siege, we are surprised constantly. So let's see if Space Station is going to be able to get this done. So, defense set up. One minute expended, standard. Uh, that's the standard get to the building kind of time. You, your first minute of the round, you can kind of, in most maps, is okay to just spend figuring out what you want to attack as an, a, or like getting the initial droning done, or even just getting to the building. So that's not the ter it's not terrible that Space Station have spent that now. But we're getting into the second minute. Thinking Nade gets a first pick onto Bolo, who's playing an odd angle there. Looks like Space Station had droned him out, and that seemed like a freebie, to be honest. EMP is also going to get rid of a lot of these uh, these batteries that have been placed pre-placed by Merc whenever he decides to use that EMP. Claymore goes down on the run out. Merc, though, himself, the bandit, takes down Rampy. So, Bolo's loss, not in vain. There was a refrag, not all over for TSM. And it seems as though that the 4v4 is going to remain constant, at least for now. But Fultz is also moving into position, it seems, to try and potentially get aggressive against this push as well, or minimum support his teammate. He's, tr the corner. he's trying to clear out what was Merc playing in that connector, yeah. but uh, he's not here right now. He's actually playing downstairs. and Well, not Merc, but somebody else is. Merc gets in sight, his second. Pojo Man adds to it with a C4, and now SSG's on the back foot. They've all but fallen apart. Fultz has managed to work his way into the site, though. That might actually be Merc's third kill if he predicts this. He's been really landing his shots so far, and he hears it. Goes for the free fire. There it is, and there's a third for Merc, but it's only a down, and Canadian gets the refrag. In a manner of speaking, there was no actual kill initially. From below, there's going to be a lot of TSM in the site just waiting to try and hold on to this push that will eventually come from the main stairs. And here it comes. Space Station Gaming on low HP with 12 seconds left. Achieved seems like the cleanup crew. Gotcha's going to get the final one, and TSM win it 7-2. Crushing scoreline here for TSM, and an amazing result from them as well. Once again, Gotcha also filling in in place for Jarvis today too. So with that factor, didn't seem to slow them down. In fact, it seemed to speed them up a little bit here and allowed for TSM to have quite an impressive game on the attacking side and, of course, those few rounds on the defensive side to be able to control this matchup and give them those very much needed points. Okay, so yeah, TSM, they narrow the gap with Rogue. They are now on the same amount of points at eight.